invited to this peace convention by a friend. And I came here because it was called a peace convention. But I, I found this catalog, like a booklet, that said something about Yusuf. It was written that raised as a strong Christian, educated in Texas, USA, he became very successful owning music stores, television shows, and was a music minister and preacher of the Bible. So I want to ask you, sir, as a preacher of the Bible, what was the, what was the reason or the point or the truth that you found in Islam that led to your conversion as a strong Christian and preacher of the Bible? That's a beautiful question. Because there's lights in my eyes, I don't know exactly where you are. Can you hold up your hand? Where I am here, sir. There you are. I'm sorry. Now I see you. Your name is Gabriel? Yes, sir. In Arabic, it's Jibril. That's the angel I was talking about. Okay. We're very happy to have you with us today. It's a pleasure to have you with us. And it's a pleasure for you to ask such a question in such a nice way. I'm privileged uh, to ask you that question. I wish I was there. I could give you a big hug. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Because when I was a Christian, see, I wasn't nice like you. You're nice. I was tough, you know. Uh, because I thought I had to save the world, I'm going to go out and preach a message. And, you know, I'm still a little wacko, don't get me wrong, but not near as bad as I was. What I found, and this is important to know, what I found was in my Bible first. What I found was in my Bible first. Because I used to travel with a lot of the so-called preachers of Christianity. And some of the ones that I traveled with, they don't represent real Christianity, by the way, but I traveled with them and I learned that I couldn't trust them. Especially when they would pick up the Bible and say, the Bible says, the Bible says. And afterwards I would say, it didn't say that. They say, who cares as long as the people think so. And so it bothered me so much that I started trying to really read and understand many different translations of the Bible. But they didn't match. So I said, well, obviously, you know, translation is not the real thing. I need to learn Koine Greek. I knew that the Latin, I had already studied Latin, and I knew that the Vulgate was only a translation of Koine Greek anyway. So when I went to the Koine Greek, it was hard. That was really hard, because those characters, they're, they're confusing, you know. I don't know if you know Greek, but it's weird Greek to me anyway. Then I come to know that, oh, by the way, actually Jesus' language was a form of Hebrew called Aramaic, a form of Semitic language called Aramaic. And I had no clue what that was. So I tried to learn the Hebrew. Now, all along the way, I'm taking, okay, interlinear Bible. I don't know if you know what that is. That's when you have the word in English, and under it will have the word in Kone Greek, and you can look it up. Now, people like Ahmed Didat, Rahim Allah, and Dr. Zachar Knight, they have these giant computer brains, okay? I don't have that. Giant computer brains, they can process all this stuff in their head. And I traveled with Zachar many times, and I have to tell you, he can really do that any time, but this is not my subject. When I was studying it, I came to realize that there was a book called Strong's Concordance of the Bible. My father had a copy, so I would sit there. It's big. It's a very big book. And I would go through and look for these words. And then it will tell you in Kone Greek what's the root, what it comes from, and what it's related to and where it's in the Bible. And then all of a sudden, I started discovering something really big. There's a whole lot of interpolation. Because if you look over here, the same exact word means one thing, but over here it means something else. And then statements that people say about the Bible are not true. If I quote to you from what we have in the Quran, I can quote it to you in the Arabic language. 
But how many people do you know that can quote the Bible in the original Aramaic of the New Testament or ancient Hebrew of the Old Testament? Not very many people, right? But I want you to look, while well, you're standing right there, Gabriel, look around this room right here. Now, I, I don't know most of these people. Some of them know me from TV or something like that, but they don't really know me. But if I open this book on any page and I start quoting out of this thing, believe it or not, they will know if I'm making mistakes. There'll be somebody in this room that can tell you, no, that's a mistake. You said it wrong. But I'm just going to go to the first page. There we go. This is the first page. Hold it so the cameras can get a shot. Hi, guys. All right. What's the first letter? First letter in the first page. Anybody know? Tell us. Ba. Everybody knows it's ba. So what's the word? Bismillah. This is Arabic. And keep in, keep in mind, this is the English program we're doing. I'm speaking some form of English right now, right? Yeah. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Next words. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Iyaka da'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Surat al-Ladina an'amta alayhim. Ah, mean. You don't have to say I mean except in Islam, but you know. Anyway. Now you could say, Gabriel, oh, well, I mean, you know, that could be a rehearsal thing that people do every day. And guess what? You'd be right. You're right. We, That's what we I'm do say that. We'd say it every day, five times a day we pray, but there are a total of 17 times we say it. So you could say, ah, they just know that. But by the way, how about if I mispronounce something? Would they catch it? Ghairul magdubi alayhum wala dalin. Whoops. Huh? Huh? Ooh, yeah, alayhim. Huh? Actually, it's both because there is another pronunciation, but the common one. Now, I want to go to the other side, though. I'm going to go to the back. I'll go to the back. That was the front. This is the back. A'udhu billahi min shaitan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul huwa Allah. Allah. Lam. Wa lam. Wa lam. That's in the back. Whoops. How about the middle? It's not actually dead middle, okay, but it's close to the middle. In Adina? How about that? That's chapter 3, verse 19, by the way. Kuntin Chayra Umatin? That's chapter 3, verse 110. Now, what I'm showing you is that we know this in Arabic. Every Muslim on the earth knows this book in the Arabic language. That's 1.6 billion know that it's in Arabic. And we have some of it memorized, and all of us know it's only in Arabic. No, wait. This is where it gets good. How many in this room, you know somebody who memorized the whole entire Quran cover to cover? Raise your hand in Arabic. You, you met somebody, you know somebody, somebody in your family, raise your hand. I did this in a university in the United States. I said, now, for the Christians, raise your hand if you ever met anybody in your life who memorized the whole Bible in Hebrew and Kone Greek, and they just went, what? Is that the language? My point is not to put down the Bible. My point is to put down the people who lie about it. 
because the more I studied the Hebrew and the Kone Greek, the more I began to realize that what I was learning from the Quran in English, I was reading English, Yusuf Ali, you remember? It was the same thing. Especially the one I read to you just now and they helped me with, Lam Yalid, well, Lam Yalid. Listen to this. I'm going to give you a translation of, of scripture. God is not a man. And God is not the son of man. Is this in the Quran? Is it in the Quran? Yes. But I didn't quote it from the Quran. I quoted it from the Bible. That's in the book of Numbers, chapter 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should sin, and God is not the son of man that he'll repent. And when I read that, I said, now wait a minute. If it says here that God is not a son of man, then how is it in the New Testament it's saying Jesus is son of man, how could he be a God? I took it to one of my preacher friends and I said, hey, look at this. What do you say about this? You know what he said? He said, that's a big S, son of man. The other one's a little S, son of man. Now, I think, I think you already know, as most of the audience knows, there's no such thing as upper and lower case letters in Aramaic, Hebrew, or Arabic. It means they lied again. And then another subject, another subject, saying Islam spread by the sword. Islam spread by the sword. I heard so many preachers telling me, get away from these Muslims. Islam spread by the sword. 604 pages, 114 chapters, 6,666 verses. Depending on how you count them up, guess what? And many words in Arabic for swords. Say, Muhammad, Hussam, I think 16 words for sword. Guess how many times I found the, any of those words in the Arabic? Zero. Not once. In the Bible, just the word sword. Over 200 times. Oops. Wait, you ask me, I'm just telling you. So when I take my Bible to the preacher and I said, excuse me, it says here that Jesus said, I did not come with peace. I came with a sword. And it's time to sell your coat and buy a sword. What did that mean? You know what he said? Listen to this. You'll never believe how people can lie. He said, don't you know this was done in Italy where they transcribed this stuff, the Latin, you know, it was in Italy. Rome is in Italy, don't you know that? I said, yeah. He said, and they would work by candlelight at night and it was hard to see, yeah. And while they were trying to translate, you know, put this down in the Latin language, you know what happened? They were eating spaghetti. The Italians, they like spaghetti. And spaghetti fell down and it made an S. It was word. It wasn't sword. It was word. He said, I came with a word. Now, you know what's wrong with that? The word for word in Kone Greek is logos. Now, how did they turn logos into sword? By dropping spaghetti on it. And here, excuse me, but what does it mean, sell your coat and buy a word? What is it, a game show on TV? I'd like to buy that word right there for $100, please. What is this? And the more I talked to them, the more I could see lie after lie after lie. And finally I said, you know what, I don't need to be in a religion full of liars. But it didn't convince me about Islam yet. Where I got convinced about Islam is over a separate subject. And then the Quran and the Bible backed it up. Right there, buddy. In the heart. Because nobody can play with your heart. That's yours. You own it. It's yours. You can do whatever you want with it. It is yours. Right? Yes. That's the one thing nobody can imprison. They can lock me in a prison, put me in a box, throw me in the ocean, but they can't control this. That's mine. That's yours. You own it.
So if you get inside of that heart, like I did, and clean it out and throw all the trash and the garbage out of there, throw the lies out of there, the misconceptions, the prejudice, and just give it all up and say, you know what, I belong to God. I just belong to God. God, guide me. And that's what I did. And when I did that, I had this strange impression I need to put my head on the ground. And so I did that. And with my head on the ground, I said these words, Gabriel. Oh, God. If you're there, guide me. And when I got up, I realized something. I'm the one with the problem. The world's not the problem. I was the problem. And from that day to this day, 19 years, I'm saying the same thing every day, 17 times a day. Edina Sarathamus the King, guide us to the straight path. Edina Sarathamus the King, guide us to the straight path. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm not psychic. We don't believe in psychics and magic and all that stuff. We don't. But I'm going to tell you something. And now you, are, you brothers and sisters, are going to see something strange. Because Gabriel and I never met. We're not setting this up. He doesn't even know what I'm going to say. But Gabriel, you've been praying in your heart, asking God to guide you, or you wouldn't be standing there right now. Is that true or false? That is true. There you go. There's your verification. He said that's true. And I know it because I've been through this again and again and again. Thousands of people I watch come to Islam again and again, just like Gabriel. They're looking for truth. They're not looking for Islam. They're not looking for the Quran. They're just looking for truth, real truth. And because there's only one God and only one way to get to God, it has to be on His terms and there's only one way. And we said it in Adina, in the Lahi, Islam. The only thing Allah wants from you is this simple thing, your heart. That's what He wants. Give Him your heart and everything else will be fine. And how you do that? I'm going to give you five words in the English language. They have to be all at the same time. Surrender, submission, obedience, sincerity, and peace. Do you want those things in your life? Yes, sir. I do too. Everybody in this room wants those things. All at the same time though. Surrender. Submission. Obedience to His commandments. You know the Ten Commandments. We got the same thing. It's the same thing. It's not a new religion. And then sincerity. To be sincere. No lies. No showing off. No riyadh for Allah only. And finally to be in peace with whatever He gives you. Say, okay, thank you. Even if you like it, thank you. If you don't like it, thank you. Anyway, because it's from Him. Be in peace with it. This word in Arabic is one. It takes five words in English. You know what the word is in Arabic? No. Islam. Islam. Really? That's the word.
I just ask him privately, I'm just going to ask again, just confirm that you believe that God is really only one God. I do believe there is okay. only one God. So now say after me, I swear. I swear. There is no God to worship except Allah. There is no God to worship except Allah. And I swear. And I swear. That Muhammad is his prophet. That Muhammad is his prophet. Allah. Now this next part is Arabic. It means the same thing, but when you say it, you're going to be saying the language that God sent it down in. The same language similar to Jesus and Abraham and Muhammad. You ready? I'll help you. Okay. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. An la. Halla. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa. Wa. Ashhadu. Ashadu Ani Muhammad Ani Muhammad Rasulullah Bismillah Rasulullah Rasulullah Perfect Masha'Allah Alhamdulillah How did I do that? Here you go Now, we have some, I have some books that I want to give you and you, you have to, you take care of it Come to the program with me after this. Bring it back there. Take care of it. This is my son. He's my guest. This is good. MashaAllah, this is exactly what Islam is. Once you present the truth, the truth is accepted. Shall we take the next question from the sister's side? And preferably, if we have non-Muslim guests here, then we would uh, like to have a question from the sister's side, from a non-Muslim sister, son. please. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wassalam, rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. While we're getting the question up, uh, I wanted to say something to you. I want you to listen carefully. Gabriel has just entered Islam. A lot of us need to do the same thing. And you know what I meant by that. We have Muslim names, but do we really, really put it into practice? My new brother and I were just crying, holding each other. And I was reliving the experience of 19 years ago. And I needed somebody to hold me then and cry with me. Because what's happening, the reason we cry, you don't know this, we do. Because we feel this rahmah of Allah, the mercy of Allah coming over us which is washing away the sins since the day we were born. It's the message Jesus preached. It's the message John the Baptist preached. It's the message that Muhammad Sallallahu preached that if you accept God as the one and only Savior, all your sins are forgiven and you're newborn just like you came out of your mother. This man, Jibril, Gabriel, has no sins at all. He is pure in front of Allah. His prayers are being accepted right now, whatever he prays for. And Gabriel, I'm going to ask you with me right now, well, pray, pray with me, just say Amin. I say, Allahumma, O oh Allah, give Hidayah to Yusuf Estes, say Amin. Amin. And for all of us, Amin. I was collecting my commission check up front. So emotional. I don't know what to say, but just these videos, they always remind me of what it was like taking my Shahada and that journey is a very difficult journey, but it's a very rewarding journey. And I think it's good to remind myself again and again of why I took my Shahada and why I'm Muslim. And I think all of us, even if you're born into Muslim families. So if you call yourself Muslim, that means that you've made the decision to call yourself Muslim. So we're all like reverts in a way. If you look at his face before he declared a Shahada and after, you can see that lost little boy inside of him, the lost little boy. And I was that lost little girl. I was very lost. I was very lost when I was in Turkey. When I discovered Islam in Turkey, I was very lost. I was so lost. And 
seeing that lost little boy or lost little girl and then seeing them be found and guided. And Allah, and Allah found you lost and he guided you. That's an ayat from the Quran that I always remember when I am, um, when I'm feeling bad. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, this video has been a huge benefit to me and I hope it has been to you too, inshallah. And I pray for all of you and maybe one day we'll meet in Jannah, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.